while we're on the topic of William Lane Craig, they dropped a new video a day or two ago that I thought was worth taking a look at. And so while we're on the topic of Bill William Lane Craig, let's just keep rolling. Hi. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> exciting news in the William Lane Craig social media front. They are going to start using the short form for William Lane Craig. I feel like perhaps what should be done with William Lane Craig at this point is to have him on camera less, maybe not more, but apparently we're looking for ways to capitalize on the whole TikTok and the short form media these days. And they're gonna go with William Lane Craig reacts, but missing the point entirely, which is kind of the MO. It seems like they've decided to put a 20 second intro of music on a minute long video what will after this will be like a minute so yay someone over there you got the right idea and work on some execution but anyway let's see what kind of TikTok here william lane craig is going to respond to i am and you don't believe in an afterlife i don't if you don't believe in heaven and hell and all that why don't you just go around raping and murdering as much as you want i do what i do go around raping and murdering as much as i want which is not which is not at all. I'm guessing several of my audience will recognize the voice of Ricky Gervais in this clip. That is because what this TikTok person is lip syncing to is a clip from Ricky Gervais's show Afterlife. Ricky, if you're watching, apologies for what's happening here. So William and Craig's crack staff here, rather than like going and finding the actual clip that they want to respond to, which is about whether or not an afterlife needs to exist for life to be magical. They found a TikToker lip syncing to it. So again, I think this is like strike two for the new William Lane Craig response series. Not at all. Because he's got conscience. What? Well, death is just the end. What's the point? What's the point in what? Living. Might as well just kill yourself. So if you're watching a movie and you're really enjoying it, something with Kevin Hill in. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen this clip now several times. I'm unclear. As to whether that Kevin Hart crack is supposed to make it more funny, are we does Ricky Gervais actually like Kevin Hart, or was that supposed to be like some ironic joke? I don't know. Let me know in the chat. Is the Kevin Hart crack is that a joke, <laughs> or is that serious, or is it just supposed to be played either way? I don't know. Anyway, you're watching a great movie, something with Kevin Hart in it, and someone points out that this will end eventually. Do you just go, oh, forget it then? What's the point? And just turn it off? No, because I can watch it again. Well, I think life is precious because you can't watch it again. I mean, you can believe in an afterlife if that makes you feel better. Doesn't mean it's true. But once you realize you're not going to be around forever, I think that's what makes life so magical. Well, now this. So you guys get the point of this, right? Dark Matter 2525 has done similar videos, like with meals that don't ever end. For example, I've talked many times about how, of course, it makes sense that the things that in life that we value most are the rare things. The more rare a commodity is, the more costs, all that kind of thing. So this makes total sense to me. Uh, Ricky Gervais put it in the form of a movie. I thought it interesting that his character responded to no, because you can watch it again, which is very much not analogous. To, it's maybe that character believes in reincarnation. I'm not super sure, but that's not, not super analogous to this Christian situation where you, you, or maybe that is the idea of heaven. Maybe you were watching this life over and over again. That would suck. If I'm going to heaven, if I become a Christian and go to heaven, man, I want fresh start. I don't need to see any of this ever again, except the YouTube parts, the YouTube videos so you can have on repeat. Anyway, let's see what William Lane Craig says to the common objection that non-believers have that only a finite life, not only a finite life, a finite life is probably worth more than an infinite life. This is really interesting because you have one person pretending to be another with a, an artificially dubbed voice. And that's exactly. That's hilarious to me. So William Lane Craig doesn't recognize Ricky Gervais. And he thinks that somehow someone filmed this video and then someone like dubbed over the video as opposed to him lip syncing. It's just fun. It's all around. This is just a mess. William Lane Craig responds, okay, cool. But yeah, your video is way too long to be a TikTok video as this one is. I get it. This isn't supposed to be, though. You had an intro. You didn't understand that it was someone lip syncing over Ricky Gervais. It's just delicious. 
exactly what the atheist can do. He can pretend that his life has meaning and is significant, even though on an atheistic view, it does not. Many atheists... So all systems of value are, are some level of pretending, right? So the whole monetary system is based on us generally just agreeing that these pieces of paper and or even like just accumulated numbers in a bank, that we're going to allow that to be worth something, even though intrinsically it's not really worth anything. A hundred dollar bills is not, doesn't have a hundred dollars worth of material in it. For example, all systems of value, including how we value our lives is based on some level of fooling ourselves and, or creating value out of something that doesn't actually have something. And that takes a lot of work. And it's something that when people aren't good at it, that's when they have a problem. And so maybe that's sometimes when they have to turn to religion, when they can't actually find something worth living for. From Nietzsche to Russell to Sartre have recognized that in the absence of God to serve as a transcendent anchor for meaning and value in life, everything becomes relative and subjective. So, but... So, William and Craig, I don't think you're catching on here that even if God is real, attaching your meaning to a God, let's say God's real, the God of the Bible, choosing to attach your self-worth and your meaning to that God isn't objective because not everyone does it. We get to subjectively decide what put, gives our life meaning. So Christians subjectively giving their life to God or to anchoring their life on the real God that really exists is still a subjective choice. Pretending that your life has meaning, certainly you can do what the video suggests and, and enjoy life. So even worse, what if the Christian God, the God of the Bible, isn't real? And you, like Dr. Craig here, are, have decided to, I'm going to give my whole life, my whole meaning is wrapped up in this Christianity that isn't actually true. You are, at that point, also equally pretending that your life has value. And Dr. Craig is on record saying that he likes his Christianity so much that he's actually, he sets the low bar. We've been through that all, all at once. He has incredible utility. He thinks that just Christianity offers you an amazing life here on this earth, even if ultimately it was to fail at the end. So William and Craig, Christians, just like everyone else, is pretending we have meaning to help us get through the day. And you've pretended that your God is true in, in, in my view, but even if he is really real, you just subjectively chosen this. You've missed the point, Dr. Craig. We're all pretending. But that doesn't actually impart genuine meaning and value to your life. It's oh, genuine meaning and value. Well, what is genuine meaning and value? That would mean that you, again, meaning has, there's no other sense in which you can say something objectively has value. So for example, if I am in a desert and I need water to survive, I've been days without water, and someone gives me several million dollars in jewels, that has no value to me because it's not something that I, it's not what I need. I need water and I would frankly give up the jewels for the water in those cases to let my life continue. So objective meaning is a ridiculous, silly concept because not objective meaning. Well, yeah, but objective value, right? You can say something has an intrinsic value, potentially, that, so for example, wood has value in several different, wood is valuable as a construction material, wood is valuable for fires, wood is valuable for shelter from, for animals in, in rains and storms, right? So there's things intrinsically that you can value out of it because they have utility, but that, again, is not an objective value. You're asking why questions about things that don't have a why. You're attributing objectivists. And I'm ramping my way up for our last story of the day. I'm going to calm down and save some of it for them. All a pretense. It's make-believe. And if we're more interested in truth than just make-believe, maybe we'd better ask ourselves, what is the objective basis for the values and the meaning that I affirm? Oh, we have an outro, apparently. All right. So what he just said there, if we value truth, then we need to take a look at this objective meaning. Well, here's the problem. Valuing truth, this has my, been my argument with you for the past couple of months, Dr. Craig. Valuing truth, when you value truth, you ignore the outcomes, you ignore the utility, you ignore the consequences of what if it is true. 
again, he is asking for us, someone, if you're truth seeking, you really need to consider the ramifications of, of what you decide to be true. That is the opposite of truth seeking. That is finding an outcome that you like or looking at an outcome. It's an argument from consequences, which is the opposite of truth seeking. That is merely confirmation bias. That's like, oh, here's the outcome that I want. So for example, you know, I want my outcome that my life is healthy. So I'm going to ignore any diagnosis that says that I'm not healthy. That's just ridiculous. That's not truth seeking. That's truth hiding. Dr. Craig, I'm in excited about this new format, even with intros and outros and all of this, because it's hilarious to me. But no, not you failed on this one. Looking forward to your next one. Was I too harsh? Did I disagree? Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the comments. Did I miss the point? Did Dr. Leg then Craig make a great point? Or do you think that he's really nailing this social media thing and I should play off him? Maybe.